Well, North Shropshire has some very fascinating landscapes, some as natural and wild as the areas around here, but some a little bit more uh, uh, interfered with by man. One of those is just up the road at Priest Heath. It's an area that's had a very chequered past. At one time it was a Second World War, World War airfield. But it's also a place of, of, of great natural beauty and of interest certainly too. And we're joined now by Stephen Lewis, who has a great interest in butterfly cons conservation in the Priest Heath area. It, it, it has had a chequered past that site, hasn't it, Stephen? Very much so. It is common land, it is Priest Heath Common, and the commoners used to be very active on the site. It was a proper heathland site going back for hundreds of years. Commoners, certain local properties have commoners' rights attached to their title deeds. Commoners used to turn out their grazing animals onto the site to keep it uh, nicely looked after, and it was a great access site for the public as well. People used to come from a long way away from Birmingham and the Black Country, have picnics on the heath, used to be a golf course on the heath, a swimming pool, all sorts of activities and amenities, and it was a, a very, very nice place. In the war, as you say, it was a World War II airfield. After the war, in the 60s, a lot of the common uh, started to be ploughed up and uh, the owners of the common at that time let agricultural tenancies and a lot of the land on the common was ploughed up and used to grow crops. This prevented the uh, commoners from exercising their grazing rights. They used to go onto the common with their uh, livestock and say how can we exercise our grazing rights when it's all been ploughed up and used to grow potatoes or wheat or beans or whatever it was. Uh, and this progressed over the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and then in the 1990s the owners decided what a good thing it would be to uh, extract uh, well over a million tonnes of sand and gravel from the site uh, which would be sort of further interfere with the commoners rights and really destroy the heathland completely uh, and that galvanised butterfly conservation Shropshire Wildlife Trust, Cheshire Wildlife Trust, the commoners, the local residents to get together to form a campaign group to save Priest Heath Common and that culminated in uh, 2006 after a long long campaign a lot of fundraising locally over £69,000 was raised locally to help buy the site in 2006 on the 30th of May Butterfly Conservation bought the western half of Priest Heath Common uh, from a company called Preceith Holdings Limited based in the Channel Islands. <clears throat> the campaign had been successful in getting the Plan A application for the sand and gravel extraction rejected which was a, a, a big turning point really and it culminated in 2006 with the, the purchase of the site. Since then we've been trying to restore the site because obviously it's been very very damaged by all the ploughing, the growing of the crops the uh, incorporation of thousands of tons of chicken manure. It is a heathland site. Now heathland is very, very important nationally and internationally. This country has lost over 80% of its heathland in the last 200 years. It holds over 20% of heathland on the planet. So it's very, very important uh, habitat for creatures like the silver studded blue butterfly and this is the only site in the whole of the Midlands where you will find that species mainly because a lot of the heathlands have disappeared so Priest Heath and the, obviously the remnant heathen that was left despite the ploughing that had gone on various parts of the common uh, it was crucial that that site was saved it became a real uh, a real sort of token of what butterfly conservation is all about. You know, if they hadn't saved this site, the silver side of blue would have disappeared, the heathland would have totally disappeared, and it'd be no more, and it'd just be used to either grow crops or sand and gravel extraction or something like that. So since 2006, we've been undergoing a huge project to try and restore those areas. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that if you want me to. Okay, Stephen, thank you very much for the time being, at least anyway. It's difficult when, you, when you've got such beautiful, attractive landscapes around Shropshire and you look at Heathland, and it's not a beauty spot, let's put it that way, but it is, as you say, it's very, very important, particularly for the silver-studded blue, as we're going to see in this short film. Hi, I'm Stephen Lewis. I'm Priest Heath Warden with Butterfly Conservation. Butterfly Conservation bought this site in 2006 and I've been the warden since then. 
Thank you. So, what is your role in Priest Heath? I have to look after the site. It's a big site, 60 hectares in all. Uh, a lot of the site was ploughed up after the war and we're restoring that back to Heathland. And that has been a very ambitious and challenging project. My main focus is to conserve the colony of silver studded blue butterflies that are here uh, and to spread the available habitat for them. So you mentioned the silver studded blue butterfly. Um, when are the peak times to come and visit the butterfly? Uh, the butterfly usually uh, starts emerging uh, middle of June and it has about a six week flight period so it goes on till roughly the end of July but it does vary year on year. This year they were a little bit early so they'll be finishing about now. And when are they most frequent, like where are they most frequently spotted? Most frequently seen on the Heathland areas like the area we've got here. Uh, <coughs> they, uh, you see the males and the, and the females, the males are blue, the females are dark brown in colour. Uh, just flying low, fluttering low amongst the heather and the grasses. So they're attracted to heather mostly as a plant? Yes, the females will lay their eggs mainly on the heather. Yeah, and um, why is this heath like a special place for the butterflies? Because it's the last sanctuary in the Midlands where you can find these species. It used to be more widespread. But here in the UK, we have lost over 80% of our heathland in the last 200 years. A lot of it has been ploughed up, as part of it has been ploughed up here at Priest Heath. Some of it's been planted with conifer trees, some of it's been basically concreted over and developed. Some of it's just been neglected and allowed to turn into woodland. So the silver sided blue would have been more commonplace in this area, but a lot of the sites where it was have been lost and this is the last place in the whole of the Midlands where it survives, so we feel this is a really special place. So you're talking about expanding the um, species. Mm. How are you planning on doing that? <clears throat> As I said, a lot of the land here was ploughed up in the 1960s and 1970s, used to grow crops, potatoes, wheat, barley, beans, that sort of thing. Despite the fact that it's common land and commoners have rights here, to put on their grazing animals. They can't graze it, of course, when it's been ploughed up and yeah. used to grow crops. So when we bought the site in 2006, we stopped all the uh, agricultural farming uh, and looked at restoring these areas back to Heathland. It's an extremely challenging process, but we have had a lot of success. And we're now just beginning to find that the silver sided blues are beginning to use those areas for breeding which is key factor. That's brilliant. And what's their relationship with the ants? The butterflies fly in the summer. Males mate with the females. Females lay the eggs mainly on heather, but they will use one or two other plants as well. The females sense where they lay their eggs is close to an ant's nest. The egg stays there throughout the winter. It's tiny, 0.8 of a millimetre in diameter. No matter how cold it gets or how deep the snow is, the egg stays there attached to the plant throughout the winter. It hatches as a tiny caterpillar in April or May. <clears throat> as soon as it hatches as a tiny caterpillar, the ants pick it up, take it to their nest. They bring it out of their nests to allow the caterpillar to feed. It feeds mainly on heather. We'll also use bird's foot trefoil. Whilst it feeds, the <clears throat> Ants protect the caterpillar from being predated by spiders or being parasitized by small wasps which like to come along and inject their eggs into the body of the yeah. caterpillar. That's clever. It's very clever. Very clever. <laughs> In return, the caterpillar gives the ants sugary secretions from a gland at the rear of its body. So it's a beneficial relationship to both parties and that's called a symbiotic relationship. Beneficial to the ant beneficial to the caterpillar. The caterpillar goes through various instars, but feeds, sheds its skin, feeds, grows some more, sheds its skin, goes through about three instars, and then will pupate in an ant's nest. The ants continue to look after it in their nest. When it's ready to emerge in the summer, in a warm morning, climbs up a stem of vegetation. For the first hour of its life, it can't fly until it's pumped up its wings, so it's vulnerable. The ants continue to protect it by crawling all over it. 
and the butterfly continues to give the ants sugary fluids mainly from its face. Mm. After about an hour the butterfly is ready to fly off, find a mate and the whole life cycle starts again. And how long do they normally live for? Each individual will live for about four or five days. Oh. No life really is no, it? No, no life. <laughs>